we're set to go. Um, I'm going to call this meeting to order. This is a reconvened meeting, uh, a continuation of a meeting, uh, Best One Realty, uh, for the expansion of the Subaru dealership. Um, we have, uh, as members of the board here tonight, Holly Riberti, uh, on my right, uh, I'm Bob Warnick, Tour Nelson is with us, as is John Friedrich. And um, I expect Carla to join us shortly. We also have our recording secretary, Christy Flynn, and our zoning administrator, Tom Badowski. If you would introduce your team, I'd appreciate that. Sure thing. Uh, Dave Birmingham, I'm the applicant from Twin City Subaru. Uh, Joseph Green is our architect. Uh, Ryan Lyford from HP Cummings, our contractor. And I heard Jose's name, but I don't see him. Jose uh, Oliver is also from Twin City Subaru. He's our general manager there so I'm having some technology difficulties so I'm doing trying to do it from my phone so mm. your audio is very good yes <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay well where we are in this meeting at this point in time Tom do you want to say anything before I no, I'm good. I'm good. Sure. What? I'm good okay <laughs> where we are where we are at this point in time is, is we've reached the meeting we've received oh, Carlos coming in sorry. Carlos joining us Okay. Waiting for Carla. There. I'm here. Yay. Hi, Carla. Hi. Still a few difficulties here at home. Okay. Okay. Um, so where we are is we, we, we held our first hearing. Uh, we um, issued some, some, some preliminary information or guidance, I should say, uh, to the applicant uh, concerns that the board had. Uh, as possible talking points uh, going forward. Uh, and the applicant has asked to be with us uh, tonight uh, to discuss those concerns. Most no notably, I'm making reference to a memorandum that stated September 9th, which summarized some of our thoughts and concerns, uh, our being the, uh, the, the board. So uh, I guess we'll turn it over to the applicant. Tell us where we are. Uh, thank you again for having us and the work that you do on uh, behalf of the town. Um, you know, thinking about this application, I can appreciate that, that this is a, uh, you know, the, the first one through the door, so to speak, on the, the new town district, you know, zoning uh, district and, and that you are, want to careful, be careful to get it right. Um, and, and um, you know, our, our goal is to expand our business. <laughs> so uh, I, think, I think we can find a way where, where I hope we can uh, meet both of our needs and, and, and uh, go forward. If it's okay, I'd, I'd kind of like to just go through the memorandum piece by piece and, and uh, try to address that. So um, uh, on the procedural side, uh, there was a highlighted uh, letter A, um, and this is uh, whether, you know, stating that the board had not considered conditional use. Uh, so I, I assume that the, the issue might be that uh, letter A, the construction of more than 16,000 square feet of commercial or industrial space. Uh, is that the, would be the main concern? Is that? Yeah, that's the okay. trigger, yeah. So I guess we look at this and say we're, we're, we are not constructing more than 16,000 square feet. We're, we're constructing approximately 13,000 square feet um, and therefore had felt that was not uh, applicable in this case. And, and I guess is there, um, if, is there some reason why, that, why this might apply if it's um, think under that threshold? Because it's collectively, you're, the building now is collectively more than 13,000 square feet. Right, but it, it doesn't it doesn't say the finished product. It says if, if the application is for the construction of more than 16,000 square feet. So that's where I guess we had um, just glossed right over that because it, it yeah. didn't seem to apply for us. Do you see a problem with meeting the conditional use criteria? Uh, no, I, um, of the, the the three, they're not on there. 
Oh, okay. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's already. It's I mean, I think it was addressed in our in our uh, application, and this. So this was looked like it was the perhaps a uh, you know a possible thing that had to be considered in that. Um, there, there, in the our zoning regulations, there's site plan review, and there's conditional use review. Yeah, there's. And so I think what this board is asking is that, in addition to your site plan review that you've submitted that you do the conditional use review as well. And I, I believe that was addressed in, in the what was submitted because it's uh, okay. It wasn't, but I don't I don't I, I don't see it as a I don't think it's a problem. Okay. Okay. I think it's just a it was a question is what it, the way we yeah, read this. Something I think we just need to go for okay. regulatory. Yeah. Okay. Well if I if I might this is Joe Green, I guess the first question is whether or not this justifies conditional use. That's the primary question. And the criteria that we're talking about specifically says the construction of 16,000 square feet. It doesn't clarify that it results in a commutative or cumulative square footage, or it doesn't speak to renovations or expansions or continuances of construction. It says simply the construction of. So our position is that we are constructing far less than 16,000 square feet. So the conditional use criteria doesn't apply, period. We're in a permitted use in the TCS district with the auto sales and service, and that's our position. So there's no need to even pursue conditional use because we're not in that criteria. Noted. Um, I think um, I think that's there's, there's room for interpretation on that yeah. one. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, I didn't see it as an issue for you, except for somebody coming back at a later date and saying you didn't want the hearing. Didn't right. <laughs> you didn't you didn't handle the meeting correctly. Yeah. Uh, okay. And appealing on the grounds that it was procedurally in error. Um, uh, what could argue after right, but that's under the that's under the assumption that we're interpreting that one line as being applicable to this project so i think the question that we have is how do we get to that determination whether or not that line is actually applicable i don't see any procedural issues for the board down the road if somebody says why didn't you proceed with conditional use if we can look them in the straight face and say well because they're not constructing more than sixteen thousand square feet that presumes that there's no changes being made to the rest of the structure. Um, well, that actually, that, if we read that sentence word for word, it doesn't make that presumption. And unfortunately, in the definitions, there's no clarification as to how that is interpreted. It's simply one sentence that says the construction of 16,000 square feet. Tom? So I'm suggesting that this board's interpretation, which I think is the interpretation that matters in the uh, in the review of applications is that a collective building over 16,000 square feet requires conditional use. And, and I would appreciate that if your team would like to be recognized and talk that that they that they raise a hand, be recognized by the chair instead of just interrupting the, the, the procedure. It is, it is important that we be recognized by the chair just because we can't see each other, you know. I'm having tr trouble picking up who's up there, you know. <laughs> Understood. Uh, so. Uh, yeah, that's my apologies. I'm happy to raise my hand in the future as obviously these proceedings are a little tough when we're doing them kind of split virtual or whatever, so my apologies, but I guess I just I we're I, I just want to have a procedural conversation about how these bylaws are being applied. And if we say it's the board's interpretation, then I guess I would love to hear each board member tell me affirmatively that that's actually their interpretation. Well, that's not the way we'll be doing that. Uh, uh, but uh, we hear your argument. We'll take it into consideration. So if um, 
what what I heard is I don't necessarily think it's an issue and and uh, but but something you may have to consider uh, if it's okay I'll move on to the substantive uh, portion and um, so on the you know uh, there were really five sections here in, in a conversation with with uh, Tom uh, he said that that you know sort of in the the order of big picture to, to uh, maybe not not less important but just in, in order of priority maybe uh, to address these so um, you know on the the I, I think a, a big thing here is this uh, on the access and circulation that uh, the Berlin Mall Road will become a public road built to a town town road standards, including including travel lanes, etc. Um, and and as an applicant, we need to discuss how this might affect our application and address cost sharing in this development. You know, I, I guess my position is I would never presume to go improve somebody else's property. This is not our property. This is not you know we, we are not. Um, uh, we will not be a, a walking destination for anybody. That's not the nature of our of our business uh, or, of our, or of our industry. And, and honestly, I don't see it as uh, within the scope of what we would be looking to do as, a, as an applicant. Um, on the other hand, you know, I, I'm a, I consider myself a good neighbor and a good corporate citizen. And I am a general proponent of the town center succeeding. I'd like to see it go through. Uh, I think it will enhance the area. I think it will make Berlin more of a uh, destination. And, and I, I think it's a, you know, a very positive thing to have happen. Um, so what I would do as a, uh, in that vein is say, as a, as a uh, interested party in the area, when the road gets redeveloped, I would be willing to, to say uh, I will certainly make the improvements in front of my property as if it was my road frontage. Um, and, you know, if that means on the west side of the road to put in a sidewalk, um, once that road is improved, uh, I would be willing to do that and, you know, make that commitment. But there is no practical way to do that now. And I certainly can't uh, undertake rebuilding that road as a part of this project. That, that doesn't seem at all reasonable to me. You are willing to commit to building a sidewalk on the west side of the road at, at, a, at a future date when you have access to the road and the ownership is clear. I, I, I would, provided I get an easement from the property owner, which I, I think was was uh, made evident in the first uh, meeting or hearing. So uh, again, you know, I, I do, it's not that, um, it's not that we have uh, an objection to doing so, but it's, there's no practical way to do that at this time. And I say when the road will be rebuilt, I'm, I'm confident it will be. Um, and uh, you know, that, that's a, that's a something I, I would, be willing to do as as just um, a good neighbor and a good corporate citizen, I guess, is is the way. But I I, I don't think that it's in the uh, should be in the scope of this uh, application at all, frankly, because it's I own no I own no road frontage. I don't I don't uh, I don't have that, and there's no uh, no way to safely add a sidewalk on on the road as it currently exists so um, you know that's that's uh, kind of kind of where it is on, on the section B of that talking about uh, internal sidewalks we can certainly make those uh, create designations and, and safe walkways and signage and and provide uh, a safe space for pedestrians to walk up to the mall prop, mall road um, the, I think the same issue exists is it, it, uh, it, it sort of be a sidewalk to nowhere uh, in, in essence because it, it ends up on a side of the road where there is no improvement um, and I think um, if, if, if I were to walk up to Walmart from my business I would 
go up the right side of my driveway, I guess, cut across the curbs, uh, you know, hop the curbs that for the where the trucks go into behind the, uh, the facilities. But there is not a there is not a uh, you know a safe space there. Um, and I think ultimately the, the sidewalk across the street, you know, we I, I suppose we could uh, do a crosswalk there and, and signage. Um, it also cross, could also put a crosswalk across the road that goes around the back side of the uh, mall. Uh, so that's not that's not a, that's not a big deal. And, not and a that's big, not a big deal to us either. I just I did, so I said if a there's a, a reasonable way to do that, I'd, I'd be, you know, I'd be uh, that'd be acceptable to us again. Assuming the, the Berlin Mall folks would give us an easement to paint on the roads and put up a sign and um, you know that that sort of thing. So uh, the, our our objections to these uh, requirements are are physical in nature, not philosophical. Uh, we we don't have we don't own the property and we 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 don't you know there is no safe zone designated there to date. So. I, I would tell you that I could argue pretty effectively that you do have frontage on the road. Your property line does not go to the road, but your property goes up to the property that owns the road. Uh, if that same property were owned by the town tomorrow, you'd have road frontage. You have road frontage, in fact, on a private road. And I think that's a. I think that's 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 an argument. I would, I would put forward. So it's a private road, but you have road frontage because you have access to it by mm -hmm. two drives. And you have, there's nothing between you and the road other than the property that owns the road. And uh, we, have, we have an owner who said, I can turn that into town property real quick. Thank you. Well, Mr. Chair? Yes. Uh, Mr. Rushman has his hand raised. Oh, thank you. Go ahead, Mr. Rushman. Uh, yes, it's actually follows up what you just said, uh, Mr. Chair. At the point in time when the road is improved, the access road to Fisher Road, uh, as I understand it, that road will become a public road, a town road, in the same way as the other end of Mull Road is being converted from a private road to a public street. Uh, and so at that point, there won't even be this distinction of having frontage on a private road. At that point, 802 Subaru will in fact have frontage on uh, a public street. And uh, I understood Mr. Birmingham's comments about that not many people walk to his dealership, but in point of fact, the road, the, the Fisher Mall Road that enters into Fisher Road is the primary way that his customers get to his dealership. Uh, so, if um, we were looking for a way forward, uh, not a way to be divisive here. Mm -hmm. and well, it 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 um, it appears as if this agreement has been made, uh, you know, without our knowledge that this is this is going to come to pass. We got a uh, notification um, uh, just before the last hearing, and. Um, uh, th this is a condition that does not exist today as I make my application and um, I, I'm uh, from a from a business standpoint and a property owner um, I think I I'm completely my rights to say I don't I don't own that property and I don't own road frontage um, and, and I suppose it could be an argument could be made for that I'm not trying to make the argument either I'm trying to say you know what, I recognize the importance of what's going on here and saying when, when that road is improved, I am willing to do my part. Uh, so um, if that is a, um, you know, if, if uh, somehow uh, the, the onus is to be put upon us as the first applicant through to, to construct this road, then honestly this is a, a non-starter for us. I, I, you know, I can't add that kind of property, you know, that kind of cost to this project and uh, have the, the, the business sustain that kind of uh, expense. So um, I'm not sure if that's what, what is being suggested here or if, if my um, suggestion is, is acceptable that, 
you know, I'm, I am trying to be a, a good, uh, good neighbor and citizen, uh, but I can't shoulder the burden of rebuilding what's going to be a town road. I also assume that there will be uh, possible state and federal monies to, to do something like that that aren't going to be available to uh, either us or the current owners as, as private businesses. So, um, you know, I, I guess I'm, I'm a little perplexed by, by that if that's the, the direction the board is, is pointing this. I should point out, you, you're, you're not the first through the gate. Um, uh, we've had other applicants uh, had, who had to deal with the same criteria uh, in the Newtown Center and also on the Barry, on the, uh, Barry Montpelier Road. Uh, both, both have the same condition for sidewalk construction mm -hmm. uh, along the front frontage of the property. So this, this is not, this is, we're not experimenting here with you. But this has okay. been, been accepted as, as, a, as a reasonable standard. Um, and has already been complied with by three other applicants. So I just so we're clear about that. So um, May I, think, I, just I, think, I think what we're trying to tell you is what what is important to the board, you know? And w one of the things that's important to the board uh, and the message we were trying to get to you is, is we're trying to make the mall road look like something other than a mall road. In other words, we want it to make it look like a street. Mm -hmm. Streets have things like parking, they have things like sidewalks, uh, they have things like landscaping. Right. And so we're trying to get to that place. Uh, and, and I think that's important for the success of the Newtown Center to have that kind of a, a visual appearance when you enter the thing. That's, that's where we were going. I, I completely understand that, and, and I also uh, acknowledge and understand that other uh, applicants in, in, the, uh, in the town of Berlin have had to uh, adhere to, you know, building sidewalks and stuff. I don't know if any of them would have been required to move re Route 302 to do, it, to do that, to accomplish it. And maybe they have, and, and somehow they, they were able to work that into their uh, budget to do so. Um, I'm just saying that there's, it's impossible for, for me to look at that and say that's a, that's a way forward. Um, if there's a, as a, you know, I, I think there's a. Um, Have you thought uh, through how you might provide access from your dealership to the mall road or to the mall from, you know, pedestrian access? Uh, well, and I think, I think uh, last meeting I said we, we would we would designate a, a drive lane. We'd probably, you know, do it with with uh, 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 painting on the the pavement and curbing and and signage, um, and try to provide a uh, a way up there. But you don't actually have plans showing this at this point. No, I, I asked to, to get in front of the board so that I could. Talk through these things, and okay. and you can spend lots of money make, putting up drawings. That if I'm throwing darts at a board, I want to make sure I'm throwing them at the, we, we the right board. We have position, and sure. I think we're trying to be responsive. Okay. Yes, Tom. Dave, I I think I heard you say that you're a you are amenable to the idea of a sidewalk in front of front of your building and uh, up on the mall road. I, I don't want to I don't want to put words in your mouth. I just. I think that's what that, you said. That well, you, when, that, when the when the road is improved, right, that, right, that right. I would cover my yeah. end of that. Yeah. So, so the, we we issue a lot of permits with with conditions that um, then after something is is built becomes difficult to to get the applicant to comply with a, a, a some time mm -hmm. in the future. Sure. So, what sort of financial like a bonding of that sidewalk so so there's some assurance that the, the, the town has more than just your your good word mm -hmm. you could you could sell the business tomorrow you could do all that so so uh, uh, I, I would think that some sort of financial mechanism like a bond that that you agree to and it's held by the town to construct you know, as collateral to, for you to construct that sidewalk may be palatable. Okay. And, and I'll just say, I'm here to find a way forward. Yeah. And, and, you know, and I'm I, just offering this. Yeah, I, I, I don't, I think that's pretty reasonable. I think there should be a, 
a, a sunset on it if it if it goes, you know, 15 years or whatever, and and nothing is happening, and and you know the 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 idea of the, you know, for for whatever reason that this this idea died on the vine, and I hope that's not the case. But I mean, I think there's with there's a there's a way forward there that that would make some sense. And, and I do believe. Uh, um, I don't want to speak for the board, but the conversations that just a painted on your asphalt uh, road for pedestrians to walk. I think this board really wants some segregation from the I travel thought lane. I said a curb. I thought I heard you. Yeah, say I a could. Curb. Well, and what I would envision is a curb between the, the two because that's that's um, you know for safety. You it know, know the sidewalk. Yeah. 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 A curb yeah. sidewalk. Yeah. We have a hand raised up. Yes, yeah, Joe. <laughs> and if we Hi guys, I just right wanted right, Joe. If I don't acknowledge you right Pardon? away, we're we're in the middle of a conversation, so I was sort of I, I oh, knew okay. you were there, but all right. Uh, so you know, I appreciate you letting me know that, but uh, I was trying to finish the conversation we were having. But um, <laughs> uh, were we done, uh, Jim? I I I think we're at. The point where yes, I'm yeah. I'm saying when we uh, we'll we'll provide a sidewalk up that drive okay. to the yes, Joe. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just I just wanted to uh, follow up with Dave's conversation and Tom's point, and and certainly he's the applicant and is his his money. And if he wants to agree to a bond, I I, I don't have any argument there. But I think to the question of how is it upheld or enforced, this, this whole process is a regulatory process and it's not somebody giving you their word, even though nobody has been sworn into these proceedings, it's still a testimony that's offered through the pseudo judiciary hearing that when it's a condition of the board that says in order to make this permit valid, the applicant shall do this and the applicant shall do that. We understand that enforcement can sometimes be cumbersome, but that is the process in which the applicant is legally uh, held to their responsibility under testimony. With regard to the painted sidewalk, again, it's Dave's um, uh, decision to make, but there are miles and miles and miles of painted and striped walking paths and bike paths on roads as popular as Route 100, Route 2. Um, they can be a safe way for people to get from point A to point B especially within a private lot that doesn't have a lot of traffic. Um, I think it can be curbed so that there is segregation. I don't know if it has to be a formal raised sidewalk, but once again, I'm not dismissing the idea. I'm just pointing out that there are plenty of examples around the state where there are very safe passages for pedestrians and bicyclists on, on paved roads that are simply painted. Um, so I just wanted to add those two cents, thanks. Thank you. And you make a good point. Um, uh, there's been no swearing in tonight, but I believe everyone here tonight has been sworn in, and this is a continuation of that previous meeting. So I, 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 I've assumed, uh, unless we have, do we have anybody new? I don't think we have anybody we new. Um, uh, you were sworn in and are under oath uh, because this is a continuation of the previous meeting. At least that's my view. So if uh, if yeah. I may, then you know we're Maybe we're on to the next one. Yeah, I think uh, you know I don't think we're we're miles apart unless I'm misinterpreting the piece about the road. But I'll I'll, I'll uh, hear back from you folks on that. I'm sure. Um, so I I think we're to the the uh, section to the town center district and um, we just. We're actually not negotiating a permit here. We're, I understand. We're, we're having a dialogue, and, and that's, an open dialogue. And yeah. We we shared with you, frankly, early in the process because you asked for it, some of our concerns, so that sure. you knew where to go, and I, address or or not address. I appreciate that 100. percent That that so, that this is not. Uh, I'm not going to walk out of here with a board, with a certificate and a gold star. Every time you would ask for, like Mr. Green asked for an opinion. Of each individual member, we don't do it that way. We basically would convene into a uh, uh, deliberate session, and we would come out of deliberate session with a decision. That's how the process would be awkward, and I would suggest we don't want to go through that. Sure. 
Sure. Um, so I, I'm going to move on to section uh, 2101 on the town center district, uh, item two on the, the substantive uh, list in the memo. And uh, A is all about the, the, the building height to conform to a quote unquote B street standard, which is uh, 25 feet, I believe. And um, we, um, we can in fact uh, find a way to make that uh, work. That's that's uh, that's that's not a, uh, a um, it would be more on a, uh, an appearance than a, than an actual building ice, but we can meet meet that criteria. And then the architectural standards. You asked us to really rethink the the facade and and um, talk about you know not a typical uh, building. I'm a very matter of fact, practical guy. You know, I don't need fancy stuff. I, I, you know, I, I, I try to provide great service when people come to my business. And frankly, I don't think they care what, what the building looks like. They want to get their business done. They want a clean place to sit and good coffee and water and a clean bathroom. Um, that said, listen, I, I understand this is this is sort of. One of the gateways into the town center and and uh, uh, what what you're trying to accomplish and, and and respect that so I asked Joe to go back and and uh, let's look at this with a, with a new set of eyes and and I talked about um, you know what if we did I, I actually am a big fan of Vermont post and beam you know structures and and so well, can we give it some sort of look like that and you know, we're going to build the building probably in the same out of the same materials, but we're going to do it in a way that that could um, just give it a frankly a completely different look. And uh, you know, I was actually thought of this as I drove up 89 and passed one of our visitor centers, and and they really did a nice job on a couple of them, I think. Um, and uh, I have been a, live in a posted beam house, so I'm I'm a fan of it. And and it's you know it's just it's to me it's very, very homey and Vermonty. So um, I asked Joe to, to play around with that, but um, you know I, I guess I was going to look for some feedback on on you know as is uh, is that, and I don't know if we'd be able to have Joe share his screen or not. Um, Joe, would you be able to put up the the 3D drawing that you did for us. Hold on, I got to get my. Oh, yeah. I, I can try. I think okay. Tom needs to let me in. You should have it now, Joe. All right. And I will tell you this: I will give it the old college try, but sometimes over Zoom, things get a little shaky on the old CAD routine. <laughs> can we? Can you guys see that? Can everybody see that? Yeah. Sure. So. Joe, if, if it's if it's okay, because I, I maybe I'll just talk us through this for a second. Yeah. Okay. So on the left is is our what I call our main entrance. The, that we're, you know, close to eighty percent of our customers are going to enter through those bay doors, okay. um, and we'd like that to be the focal point. Uh, you know, so that's where where uh, Joe added in more windows, he added in the post and beam accents, he added in a, a cupola. Um, and, you know, it looks a little more like the, a Vermont barn and, and, and a, a, to me, a more welcoming structure. Um, Subaru hates this, by the way. Um, I, I think I can work through that with them, but I, you know, <laughs> I, I have to call them and say, I'm trying to do something different and they want McDonald's Golden Arches. They want everything to look the same so that it is, uh, in fact, you know, identifiable as a as a, a large logo, right? So um, we, we we have that, and then Joe, if you could pan down the the span of the, the 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 long facade that I think was probably the greatest concern. So this viewpoint is from. So this is the eastern elevation, I'm sorry, facing the Berlin Mall Road. Okay. And uh, so this is what we're going to see from the street. And so we kind of carried that same post and beam look across the facade of the building um, and used um, 
uh, Joe, if I mess this up, it's a, what, what he calls rain wall is, is you know, wood, wood um, um, uh, boards that, that go in a horizontal fashion and, and to me look like a lot of places wasps can sit, but it does look kind of cool. Is it a hardy plank, Joe? Um, well, this is a rain screen, and um, the material of choice would be a wood-like material, but we are probably going towards a cellular PVC that's more of a plastic, just because it's more durable. Back in the day, we used to use teak or iPay, which is very expensive wood, um, and it doesn't preclude us from using wood, but the cellular PVCs have come a long ways, and they have a wood grain, and they can be pre-tinted to any color. So. The color would be, in this case, a darker wood finish, and then we'd use glue lambs out in front to emulate a little bit of a, an arbor, if you will, and those would be more of a dug fir or a lighter wood color, just to help break up that long facade. And then everything that's dark gray is the standard Subaru slate, which is a prerequisite for those guys. The tower slate is non-negotiable, so we've included the Wayne Scott, if you will, along the primary facade and then clad this area here, which is the intermediary between the service shop and the service drive. And then, of course, everything in gray remains the metal panels that we had talked about before. Is there a um, requirement for the color coloring of the cupola roof? Can that change? Can that be changed? Uh, well, the, the cupola isn't a requirement from Subaru. As Dave said, they, they actually probably hate this gable roof <laughs> that was our design to begin with. That's what I'm but saying. They, yeah, but I think the, the my expectation would be that the cupola siding would be the same as the primary building siding um, on this. But yeah, I think, again, at this point, everything's quote unquote negotiable. You know, the thought is that this is a standing seam metal roof, probably a dark gray or a black to help accent the uh, timbers. And then the cupola might even have louvers in it to emulate a functioning cupola, even though it wouldn't be. I haven't talked them into the weather vane yet, but I'm working. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Water, water, water tank. Are we not talking? a bad idea. <laughs> weather can change so fast here. <laughs> well, it, it is always Subaru weather on this weather vane. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, I think in the grand scheme of things, you know, this, this is an attempt to try to, uh, obviously it's not completely detailed, but it's more of an attempt to show you a direction that is quite a separation from the last images that you guys saw. Um, obviously with the hope that this, this primary element on the left is really gonna be the focal point. It's the closest to the road. It's on an angle as we talked about last time. Now incorporating a pitched roof uh, with these timber accents. Uh, it really brings it down into that human scale and then breaking up the long facade again to meet those architectural desires um, and adding more glass to the front yeah, right. uh, to help them break that up. Yeah. There's a few extra for the other board members. Sure. A question uh, by the question by the members of the board. This is Carla. Dave, you could make it a super weather vane. I think we have to come up with something a little cooler than that, but who knows? Yeah. <laughs> the words love. Yeah. Someone's paying attention. Yes. Um, that might make them happy. <laughs> Unless somebody has uh, further comments on the uh, architectural standards, questions about the architectural standards, I would go ahead with the uh, next yeah. section. And just, just moving forward. Sure. May I, may I just ask, does that help? Does this help? <laughs> we, this. We, were, we were, I think we were looking, I'll speak for myself. Sure. Because uh, I may be... I'm the engineer on the board, so you know I'm on, on, the, on the outside here. Uh, the um, we're looking for an effort on your part. Uh, we, I will tell you that 
uh, you labor under a, uh, the problem in that we can look up a half a dozen Subaru places that have some very nice architectural work done. Um, I think uh, yeah. Framingham, or Farmington, uh, Connecticut, very nice facility. Uh, it's not the standard Subaru. Uh, if it, it would, that, that kind of design would fit into what we're talking about. And so we've seen examples of what Subaru can do. Mm -hmm. It will accept, yeah. Uh, so, um, uh, so we were looking for some, some sense of that. And and I, I hope this accomplishes that. And that, and uh, so I'm, I'm sensing that maybe you don't think it does. And and that's no, I, I, I'm not saying that. At all. Okay, I'm, I'm just, not, I'm just I'm so, you know, uh, it's it's one of those things we're we're trying to look for some feedback because. I mean, I think concrete bridges look good. So you know, <laughs> you're talking to the wrong the wrong member of this board. Um, you know, and, and most of the really cool examples you'll see online are almost all metal panels. I, I don't know if that's what you ran into. I do have a few examples in my head that don't fit that mold, but um, it was also a multi-year process fighting with Subaru to accomplish some of those things. And it was all driven by, you know, local zoning and, and we certainly want to avoid that if we can. So the, the, the approach tonight was to try to say, hey, we, we, we want to please here. Um, you know, we're, we, we can meet the height restrictions. We'll, we'll be creative on the exterior. You know, you're looking at probably a several hundred thousand dollar price increase to me to, to accomplish this over my simple, I want a clean building. But, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's the type of flexibility we're, we're trying to display, I guess, so. What we'll do is, you know, is, is we're, we're having a dialogue here. You, you, mm -hmm. I'm asking every member of the board here to speak, um, uh, but the actions of the board will be deli after deliberation. I think my feeling is we should give you a sense afterwards of whether or not we've made progress and if there are the loose ends. Uh, just before you go ahead and put a lot of uh, pencil to paper. Thank you. Thank um, you. That would be my, That's my, 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 my recommendation to the rest of the board. Um, and, uh, and we'll evaluate uh, where we are at this point in time, given the dialogue we've had so far okay. on all of these issues that we've, got, we've covered. So, so then, thank you. I, I'll, I'll move on. Uh, on the outdoor lighting, uh, there, there was, in fact, a revision necessary in order to meet the uh, zero denominator. So that, that has been accomplished, and there's a attached to those uh, drawings I gave you as a new, um, on the last page is a, a new photometrics uh, display there that should meet that criteria now. Yeah, I, I would need to. Okay. Sure, yeah, it's an eye chart too, so. <laughs> I can send it electronically if that helps anyone. Um, so the the, the the areas I know that, that are very hard for you to flex on are the, those first couple of things that we've, we've spent a lot of time on. The, the areas that are really difficult uh, for us to flex on are, are around the parking issues. Our, our, the core of our business is we're a sales lot. Uh, people come because they want to see our products, test drive our products, compare products side by side, and um, by, you know, uh, Tom will tell you, I've been trying to find ex external storage lots for several years for our dealerships. It's a problem uh, that's ongoing. I have two different things in the works, one in town and one out of town. Uh, it's a, such a horrible thing to have to do, but it's, it's a necessary evil uh, given the, the nature of our business. But to lose any, any parking uh, unnecessarily on this property is is um, it starts to become now you know uh, uh, another economic uh, uh, penalty for us. So we're we're, we're reducing our current parking um, uh, by by adding the, uh, the the expansion of the building and uh, to to try to further. Um, limit parking for setbacks and things where we again the the setbacks from the road are already way off base for this district and and you know again 
sort of out of our control. Uh, it's we're we're actually reducing the current, uh, you know, existing conditions and and therefore reducing parking. I guess in in essence, improving that. But um, you know, for for both parking limitations and setbacks, it's just a um, you know that's that's what the core of our business. So Questions that, by the board. Tom, you have some thoughts? Dave, I think what we were discussing is is uh, was if if you could just eliminate these spaces right here and then that gets that that would meet the, the setback to parking right I think it right it, I think it does uh, I didn't get too far the devil in that detail and that's 10 15 spaces and uh, you know your business I you know but that that I think that's what what we were trying to trying to do maybe, a, maybe make this you know a green space a picnic table out here or something I, I don't know something like that so the economics of this honestly are uh, that parking spot is probably twelve thousand five hundred dollars to fifteen thousand dollars to me it's it's a uh, you know it's a cumulative 10 parking spots is is a substantial uh hit and every time we have to go off-site to bring product for a customer you know it just increases liability from an accident standpoint etc increases traffic and stress on the traffic patterns that frankly you know we we are trying to limit as as much as possible um it, it's from the from the street when the sidewalk is there it's it really is <laughs> from a visual impact it's not going to make a difference it's it's we're a car lot and I can't apologize for that. That's what, what the core of our business is. Um, so this is just an area I'd ask the board and say, you know, please, please allow us to do, conduct our business. And, and, and you know, um, I, I, the, the properties I've found offsite aren't adequate for our overflow, present conditions. <laughs> Uh, excluded because we don't have any inventory right now for, because of the microchip problem. I was but say, if you have inventory <laughs> now, I don't know what you're about because you would be the only person I know. Oh my goodness. Yeah. It, that's a, that's a, another, another whole meeting. Hopefully, uh, hopefully that's just temporary. Uh, yeah. I, <laughs> have you thought about like eliminating some of them, you know, having sort of bulb outs with some landscaping, maybe eliminate five and you know and and put some trees in or something to help sort of segue you know this area into down into the lot so um we we, we did in fact we had an exhausting discussion uh -huh. uh, on this and and one of the problems is is when we uh, snow is a is an all-day event for an automobile dealership and we are obviously in a in a snowy area okay. Uh, every every impediment you put to a snow plow uh -huh. creates, um, right. you know, more challenges. So this area is already a major challenge. And, and when we have an overnight snow, this is the area we need to get clear as fast as possible because everyone's trying to drop off their cars before work. And, and uh, it, it really is, is such a challenge. And that's, you know, I'd, I'd hate to lose spots back here, but... I, it would be harder for me to say that is such essential travel lanes that, you know, it, it, but this is one of those areas, if I don't have that space to clear and if I put more impediments there, it, it, it frankly becomes a safety issue on site, um, on, especially on those snow days. Um, and this area is already tighter than we'd like it to be, um, but it's the best that we can do given, given the current site. So we, we have... <laughs> we have beat this thing silly, honestly, mm -hmm. uh, trying to come up with, with different, uh, different options. And every time, you know, I'm asking the engineers, find me 10 more parking spots. That's, you know, $250,000 in a year. That's please find them for me. And he's, mm -hmm. he's telling me storm order, he's doing his job and making it, uh, meet, meet the, the criteria as best we can. But, 
uh, honestly, it's it's such a challenge um, for our, for our business, and and will continue to be uh, for for years to come, unfortunately. But that's my problem, not yours. So, Tom, this facility is surrounded by a sea of parking. Have you talked to them all about maybe availability of parking that they may have, which then could allow you to maybe re redo some of these? I'm just suggesting that you talk to them to, to that end and, and see if... See if I, I had agreements predating the current mall ownership and had a, a, an agreement with the current mall ownership, but when they developed Coles across the street, I lost that, that option. Um, you know, they're a very good neighbor. I'm sure if there was a feasible way to do it, but uh, they, they would be open to such an agreement. But um, to, to have that and not have it as a permanent solution and then give up space on here is, is really, you know, Tom, you know, no, <laughs> no, I we've been trying for yeah, years. Yeah, yeah, I, and, I understand yeah, it seems like Coles has a lot of available parking. <laughs> We, we we look at it with a little greenness I, yeah. I must say we you know but that's they're they're a tenant and they pay their 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 rent to have that space and so we, we uh, but but again that's I, I really just don't see us being able to give up parking on this this it's so critical and that's that's the core of our business I wish you know, I wish we had three more acres of parking here and not what you all want to hear, but that's the reality of our business is it's, it's an immediate business and people are busy and they, you know, to, to even run 10 minutes of, uh, and get a car is a 20 minute uh, return um, while people are trying to be efficient. It's just very difficult. Um, and we try to work on appointments so we can have your three cars you're interested, but that just doesn't always work. Questions or comments by the board? Tour, caller, John? No. I would just ask you to go back to your narrative then and try to give more detail on the number of spaces earmarked for, for um, employees, earmarked for customer drop off. Uh, your, your narrative sort of just lumped it, said, you know, the X amount, and, and so just, just yeah. to give us some thought so we could. Yeah, that's. Could, I, I'd be happy to do idea. that, sure. Yeah, okay. see what, you part, know. Part, part, part of our issues are not so much sad, satisfying Berlin, but Berlin wants to meet its objectives with the for state the of center. Okay. We really have to address criticisms we've had from the state. Yeah. Right? Understood. Understood. Um, and so, uh, I think we have to demonstrate the best efforts. Right. I, uh, I, I, I described it to, to my team as a tightrope. I think you all have to walk a little bit. <laughs> and I, 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 I appreciate that. It's not a simple task to, you know, uphold the, the, the vision and, and, and still, you know, Try to be uh, sensitive to, to applicants' needs, and you know we certainly appreciate that. If if I can, I'd just like to make a general statement about our business uh, because on the at first glance, I don't know that we actually fit the vision of what you know a town center ought to be. Okay, <laughs> uh, and you know let's let's talk about the elephant in here. It's a nice <laughs> nice elephant, um, but. In truth, a business like ours is a very valuable business to a town center. Our, we're a destination. People come because they want to look at a Toyota and they want to look at a Subaru or they need to get their service. And, and, and a reality for all of us these days is they have a recall on their car and they have to get it done because it's a safety issue. So. Um, Toyota did a study for us, Subaru did studies for us, and, and uh, on average, our average service customer is dri driving 26 miles to get, come to our business. Um, and if you 
know what all our roads are like, that could be a 45 minute trip for some of these people. So we're actually bringing a lot of people to the town center district that would not be coming otherwise. And a lot of the businesses that I think we all envision populating this center in the future are going to benefit from that. Um, not only are we bringing them to this site, but more importantly, we, have a, uh, we tend to have an affluent customer. Uh, because they drive 26 miles on average, they don't necessarily want to drop off their car and, and go away. We have many, many customers that just decide they're going to wait for their car to be repaired. And as thrilling and exciting a, a place as we are, it's not the most, uh, you know, just entertaining place to be. So having businesses in the area for them to visit while they have time on their hands and money in their pockets is a really powerful thing for this town center. And, you know, with the, this expansion, we, we currently, you know, have um, anywhere between 150 and 200 customers arriving a day. You know, we expect that to go up and it will take a few years to grow into this, but we expect that to go up, you know, 50 to 100 customers a day. We all also need to add employees because of that. Our employees also need a places to go out and have lunch and, and shop and, and, and uh, so we believe we're an economic engine for the town center. And, um, and you know, again, at first glance, maybe we're not the, uh, the bougie cop coffee shops that would be kind of cool to have in sidewalk cafes, but we're gonna bring people that wanna be at those places. And I think that's a really- You could have a sidewalk cafe right <laughs> here. <laughs> so, um, you know, the, the, um, uh, the truth of the matter is we, we really are a destination uh, business. And um, all of those people that, that come here, and, and please, this is not a, this is not a, um, any sort of, you know, do this or else. It's 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 just a, a, a fact that if I can't get this application approved, I have to go off site somewhere and build this. And I have another fight with Subaru, but that's my problem, not yours. But with that expansion goes a lot of those people who might also otherwise be brought right to this town center district. And I think that's really where this could become a win win for uh, the town, the the occupants of the center and and my customers alike that you know if they have interesting things to do it it uh, sometimes we lose people to burlington because there's more to do up there so if they drop off their car up there and go in, down to church street you know it'd be nice to have a church street here in berlin and i think that's what you're after so i can bring a lot of people to our street and uh I hope that's. Can we get that in writing? <laughs> <laughs> well, which, the, the, which, is, which is why we think access and circulation yeah. for your customers to the rest of the facilities is, is really paramount. We, uh, you know, <laughs> I, I don't disagree at all. I think it's going to be accomplished in, in the future more with uh, probably autonomous electric vehicles mm -hmm. that will scoot up to Starbucks and, and things like that. So. Um, that's 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 a little bit down the road, but it's not it's it's actually happening. So um, you know. <laughs> and, and just as a sidebar, if you allow me, Mr. Chair, the you know the planning commission is talking about what can we do on this road, and and you know we're talking about adding you know trying to get food trucks to come in on a regular basis and and just start creating that atmosphere that that you just alluded to Dave and and, and I, I you know I could say personally that that uh, uh, we welcome your business in this town I think we've shown that we have uh, uh, been good good partners uh, and we wanted that to continue uh, I concur and that's why I came yeah. in this to have a dialogue rather than lawyer uppers and do anything dumb okay yeah. <laughs> so that's that's really where where my heart's at on this is you know we i, I want to see that that vision yeah. i love the food trucks up the hill yeah. yeah. so that would be awesome for our customers so um 
I, I just hope we can can find a find a way forward. I certainly appreciate everyone. Uh, there was one other item on. Oh, here I'm sorry. Did not address. That, yeah, oh, number five. The parking setback. Yeah. That that's uh, it that. Uh, that's different than four, I think. Okay, uh, sorry, I, I was sort of addressing yeah. them yeah. In, in, in a lump sum because they're, they're part and parcel of the same issue for me, is giving up space or, or playing with the setbacks as they are really, especially up here, is just going to impede everything that happens in the key what, elements what, what, of what our the British. What our discussion at the deliberative session we had was, can you just acquire another 10 feet and move your property line through a prop boundary line adjustment with the mall, 10 feet, and then you make you meet this? Um, it's just something for you to consider. I, I mean, who knows? Right. I, I, you know that no, that it, it's just. I, I'm uh, trying to yep. I'm trying to do a simple subdivision on it different piece of property and it's taken a year mm -hmm. um, well, so this, th this is something that the zoning administrator could do so it's not a subdivision it's a boundary line adjustment you're both contiguous property owners it's a, it's a very it's a 48 hour process yeah. but uh, I'm just saying have you considered it I haven't but I certainly will will look at it I, 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 apparently I've been paying tax on that piece of property <laughs> anyway so Good view. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. But. Good, for, good for the town. Uh, good, know, good for the mall. Well, you know, it's, 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 it, it, frankly, until we saw these plans, we, I think many of us thought you were probably went the line, went up, yes. the, went yes. up the road. Yeah, I, it's, would, it's would a natural made, assumption. It would sense. Yeah. Um, and that line it, probably predates the road. It does, and it predates, uh, predates, uh, owners on the mall side and, and my ownership uh, by uh, considerably so yeah. I know the guy grew up on the farm here he used to work at to ah. the Toyota building so yeah um, well it, it's a it's a not terribly creative it's, it's a simple way to, to solve that a regulatory requirement uh, uh, by moving a property line uh, you already have I presume some kind of easement to maintain that swale but maybe uh, no. We know we have a, just a simple easement for the the access road, um, but we we have always maintained that just as uh, a courtesy. Again, predating the when when uh, when I do you have a right of way for that access road? Is it an easement or it right is an it is an easement, uh, I, I believe, and and. Um, I can I can confirm that for you, but I, I think you're right. yeah, it, it we, we we looked it up and it was it was an easement. We have another one off the Toyota property, and then we have actual frontage on Fisher Road. So, yeah. any other questions by board members? Further comments by the applicant. Thank you for your time. Please, I hope you, you understand we're, we're, we're trying to be flexible and, and um, agreeable with, with the vision. And that's ultimately, everybody needs to maybe walk away giving up a little and, but gaining the bulk of, of a positive move forward, so. Uh, as I said earlier, I'd like to suggest that the board uh, reconvene and deliver a session uh, at another time, or we could do it tonight. Uh, just give some feedback to the applicant. I think it would be better served if we were all together, but uh, I'll let you make that decision, Mr. Chair. You mean all together as in one room? Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's These plants go away for people who are on yeah. yeah they don't have that's yeah. true that's a good point how does the board feel about that i mean i'm game sounds good to me you're game for what yeah uh, getting together 
medium person. A medium person having a, a discussion. And I'm not talking about a very long discussion. I think what we're talking about here is we've heard some information from the applicant. Uh, we've, we've thrown some issues out for the applicant. Uh, where do we go? The question is, where do we go next? And what kind of guidance do we give the applicant before he spends a lot more money on pencil right. paper? Right. Um, Mr. Chair? Yes. Uh, Mr. Green has his hand up. Mr. Green, please. I just wanted to maybe request um, that maybe we could ask the board tonight what their general thoughts are on some of these points of order, because if you if you go away to deliberative session and it's another seven to 10 days before Dave gets additional directive, then it's another seven to 10 days after that to have potentially revised documents to then get on another agenda. And as we said last time, you know, we're, we're very much up against the construction season, as you know, um, and there's been some great dialogue tonight. There seems to be some inflection in terms of where the board is at, but I think it would be nice while everybody's still connected, if, if we could just get a general sense on, you know, what are non-starters and, and what are considerations? Because I think from both sides, there's some movement towards the middle, but it also appears that there might be a couple of things on the outside of it that if, if, if we're not willing to move one way or the other, then it could be a lot of time lost over the next couple of weeks just to get to that point of, of finding out that it's a non-starter. So it's just a simple request. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's a fair request. Unfortunately, the board doesn't act individually. It really acts as a body. Uh, so we really would need to deliberate. We, we, I don't, you know, if I told you what I thought, it'd be, you know, might be different inappropriate, you know, and, and it may not be the convincing thought, you know. So I think it'd be better if we did that. I, let me make this commitment to you. We'll not make it seven days. We'll make it much quicker than that. Uh, if I had my druthers, I would need to poll the members of the board because we have all have other lives. Yeah. Um, but uh, if we could get together uh, this week, someday early this week, Thursday, we we'll see. It's, you know, Thursday, something like that. I could do Thursday. Thursday's hard. Thursday. 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 Thursday's really hard for me. I've got a lot going on Thursday. Friday. Are you doing Friday? Can you do Friday? I could. I can do Friday. I can do Friday. Friday, we'll, we'll early afternoon for me. Yeah, early afternoon. Yeah, it does for yeah. me. Carla, can you do afternoon? Let me just look at my schedule. Hold on. Because I'm saying that without looking at the calendar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so am I. Or yeah, un unfortunately, I have to uh, uh, bow out of an in-person meeting right now. So, yeah. I, I yeah. Appreciate I, that. sorry, I can Friday afternoon is fine. Okay, we we'll try to see if we can't get some feedback from you, John. Okay. Uh, One p.m. ish. One p.m. ish. Yeah, yeah. Again, uh, let's confirm that. But uh, so we're going to shoot for that, and you should hear from us uh, this week. Well, I'll have to send out a notice that warning this. And yeah. Two days. Two days. That's right. So. Yeah, so well, this is this. So it'll go. We don't need to send out a notice. This is we're we're in. But you are re you are meeting as a board again. I'll have to warn that you are meeting here again. Oh yeah, deliberate. Yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. Yeah. Yeah. But so two days notice. Yeah, you know, go out tomorrow. Yeah. 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 Okay. That is an important. And part. I copy it. Yeah. So. Um, we'll make commitment to get back to you this week. If we can. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, we do appreciate you running out of time. Um, I got to tell you, I, I'm not always totally sympathetic to that because one could argue that you should have started earlier. <laughs> Wish we could have. We've been, it's, it's a, uh, but have there's a couple of fronts. Having had plenty of clients over the years that okay. decide they want to do something this fall and they decide yeah. that in August. It's um, a big project. <laughs> Yeah. It was supposed to be last fall, frankly, and it's been the, this. I think you sense tugs. that we, we feel we've made some progress. Yeah. I guess what, what the board has to do as a body is decide have we made enough progress here that if we continue, are we, we good? So and, and it would not be a permit. It would not be a go okay because you still got the issues addressed. 
So, will this meet our regulations? That it, that a certain percentage has to be of that of that height. Yes, that that entire uh, facade, the blue line on to the right, Tom. If you look at the the, the this. this. This blue line across the, the top of this long building will be at 25 feet. Okay. And, and then this will be higher, and this will be higher. So, yeah, yes, we're, we're, yeah. we understood the spirit of that, yep. I think. Yep. Um, yep. Okay. I think that's important. I think that's important stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Bob? Uh, yes? We, do, so we have to continue this meeting, don't we? Yes. Um, so I would accept the motion to continue this meeting to Friday, 1 p.m. That date is 24. I was referring to the hearing. Don't we have, we, last oh, time yes, we yes, continued yes, it. Yes, 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 um, Oh, we have to get another date, you right. mean? Yeah, that, that really comes back to you, though. When can you get back to us with, assuming that we, we've got a place to go here, uh, which I think we, we're thinking we do. At least I'm thinking we do, speaking as one person. Uh, we would need to get, get you back on for the meeting, and that would mean stuff from Joe, stuff from so, yeah. yeah. So prior to Friday. you prior to you meeting Friday, I'm going to try to get you some articulation on the breakdown on parking, yeah. so that 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 can be, be that hard. no. We've already got the lighting. We've already got it. We've got the lighting. Uh, the uh, you know I guess. We, we can put a lot more detail into this uh, th this drawing and, and breakdown of materials and such but again wanting to know is this is this uh, the a direction that makes makes you happy uh, was was what we were looking for um, you know I'm excited about the the, the service drive and post and beam as I said I, I kind of like that I think it's a very Homie and Vermonti, and it's uh, you know. Well, we just think that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, and and, and I and I, I should say, if you say this looks good, I actually need a denial from the board in order to go and appeal this with Subaru. <laughs> so they won't approve this as it sits. If if I get. Uh, a denial that on, they on the other you mean on the other that 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 the this is not an acceptable uh, proposal for the current standards uh, you you need to do something different this is our solution and and in order to get an exception including moving that tower off the the other wall it's it's a bunch of I'm not sure how we do that I, we we issue a denial and you have to go into appeal but we. Can, would it be satisfactory if uh, uh, you had something short of an actual denial of a permit? Well, can we say that what you submitted is not a, does not meet our regulations? The, 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 the term that was used with me is we, we need you to be denied and that you have to appeal the, the, the application. I'm assuming for you. wasn't my favorite day uh, yeah. but so you could deny it tonight well we're not if, if we're not ruling on the whole application though but you could oh, we, you can go deliver the session and discuss it right? I, I guess but what, what I would ask is that that we could continue the dialogue and if it was we find a we see a way forward here that we then Figure out the best way to accomplish that to meet all of our needs. Is that reasonable? Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm not prepared to deal with that tonight. Um, I'd have to really look at our bylaws to see how we do that. Yeah, because uh, that means we'd have to. We try not to deny people. <laughs> <laughs> just so I don't want you to <laughs> not to we deny just, my application. We, we try to. Yeah. We try to all work together. Um, but I understand your situation. So, uh, so the question well, is, if you really actually need a denial. I'll confirm. Uh, can you can you deal with a denial on one line? Yes, Mr. Green. Maybe just a suggestion to consider language. This isn't the language, but 
um, in other jurisdictions and other um, experiences that we've had, the boards typically deliberate and make a decision on a point by point basis. Um, so I think it would be okay within your decision making process to say on point with regard to facade and meeting architectural standards, the applicant's original proposal exhibit one, it does not meet our standards and therefore is not approved by the board. However, subsequent or subsequent submission exhibit two does. Therefore, the board finds that exhibit two meets our standards or something like that. So you're offering a denial on exhibit one, but then recognizing that the applicant followed up with an alternative solution that didn't meet your approval. So some, something to that effect. Uh, I'll circle back with the folks at Subaru and say, what do you actually need and and okay. convey that? Okay. okay. But. The, um, that that works for me. We just need to work through the logistics. But a, a good suggestion, Mr. Green. Uh, what I'd rather not do, however, is deal with the other points yet. Right. In other words, I, I don't want to have findings and a, in, in a, on, on the other points uh, till we flush them out. But we certainly could have a finding on the architectural standards. That's basic for the district. Yeah. We're all nodding. I think we can get there. I'll, I'll get some clarification tomorrow and, and okay. provide that in writing for you. Thank you. Um, do you have a date we could? could... I'm going to suggest uh, uh, we do not have anything on October 5th for this board's consideration. We actually do is deer season, but go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Does, that doesn't give the applicant much time. Know, much time. Uh, but let's we, let's let's pick let's pick October fifth. You, you see how much you can promise you can make, and we that may not be enough time for you, but at least we can. We then can they can it. ask for a. Yeah, you can ask for a for okay. continuation. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, so I, I would have had a motion then to, Carlos, since you're the one who brought it up, a motion to continue this to October fifth. Moved. Second. 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 Second by Polly. Um, discussion of that motion. All in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 And we will plan on that as a date when hopefully uh, we can have uh, a, 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 perhaps a final hearing. Uh, okay. Thank and you. If for some reason you have trouble with that, you'll let us know. It'll be 7 p.m. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, is is anything else coming for this board? We thank you for showing up tonight. Thank you all for your time. I appreciate it. And uh, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Do you have to make a motion to go into the order session? Second. Pardon? Do you have to make a motion? We, we need to move to deliberate on Friday. That's what yes. You, that's what you did on Friday. Yes, good point. Christy. Valid point. Thank you, Christy. Okay. Well, we, if we're going to deliberate on Friday, which is what we think we've agreed to do, uh, we do need a motion to go into deliberate session on Friday at 1 p.m. I will move to go into deliberative session on Friday at 1. Is there a second to that motion? Okay. Thank you, Tour. Discussion on that motion. We understand that's difficult for you, John, but we'll see if we can't get feedback from you. Okay, thank you. Um, the, um, all those in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 And we will uh, go into a little session on Friday, and we'll continue this meeting, uh, this hearing on October 5th. Okay. Next, if, should I move that we adjourn now? Yes. <laughs> I, I, think, I, think, I think we're there. I think we're finally there. Uh, we got a motion adjourned. Is there a second? I'll second it. Got to be a second. <laughs> yeah. All those in favor of that motion? Aye. 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 Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Good night, everybody. Thank you.